Welcome back to Block TV. It's time now for stress test. And in the crypto sphere, the two biggest drivers are still fear and greed. But with emotions running the show, there is a serious need for the industry to develop more accurate metrics. And fortunately, we have with us a man who can help us to understand things from a new perspective. The Thai co-founder, Joshua Frank, whose proprietary sentiment data breaks down how the millions of people who make up the crypto sphere feel about where the markets are headed. Joshua, thanks so much for joining us again. Thanks for having me, Asher. All right, so to kick things off this week, we've got some interesting news and data coming out of the world of Ethereum Twitter. What can you tell us? Yeah, so what, we, what we've begun to see is that Ethereum tweet volumes have crashed, and they've actually crashed to their lowest level since we started tracking Ethereum in December 2017. So if you look at, if you look at the chart here, you can see that uh, Ethereum tweet volumes peaked uh, in July 2018. We saw about 16,000 Ethereum tweets per day. Uh, and that, that is the blue area chart there, the, the lighter blue. And if you, go, if you go to the right and you go all the way to now, you can see that tweet volumes have crashed to below 6,000. So we've seen a, a, an absolutely massive drop um, alongside market cap and price. Price has also been dropping, which is that blue line. Um, so if we look at Ethereum's tweet volume and market cap dominance, and what tweet volume and market cap dominance represent is the percentage of overall quick crypto tweets, which is that area chart that Ethereum represents. And the, the line is a percentage of overall market cap that Ethereum represents. So what we're seeing is that both have been, been falling, but, but tweet volume dominance at one point um, was, was, above 20, uh, was above 25%, and it's, it's now below 4%. So it's, it's seen an absolutely massive drop. So if we want to compare that to Bitcoin as, as kind of a benchmark, which we often do, uh, we could see that, that Bitcoin, which is that orange area chart, has also seen uh, its, its tweet volumes dropping, but they're nowhere near as significant as, as Ethereum's. And, and that's really evidenced by the, the end there of that area chart, the blue, the blue area for, for Ethereum, where you can see that just in August, uh, Ethereum tweet volumes dropped by another 25%. So uh, one final chart. Uh, yeah, no, please, please, Asher. No, I was going to say, I mean, it's interesting. Uh, we see this tweet volume dropping off uh, so dramatically. Is there a point where it uh, reaches some sort of tipping point? Uh, I want to ask, you know, is there, is, have you seen in other coins or in your data as well where it's going to reach a point uh, where perhaps uh, it's difficult or almost impossible to recover back? Yeah, I don't know. I think the crypto market is still so early that we haven't really seen anything this significant right i mean you had you know in the kind of i guess you know earlier days of crypto you had other coins like pure coin uh and other large coins that that did have significant traction and represent a significant percentage of, of, of overall market cap but crypto twitter was not what it is today then so i think it's still early i mean i i, I don't think we have you know an understanding of what's going to happen but but this isn't really contained to just ethereum this is this is pretty much a broad across the crypto spectrum where we're seeing tweet volumes fall, but it but it, is, is it seems to be most significant for Ethereum and other platform tokens like EOS and Tron as well. Okay, so uh, I, know, I, know to, I know you have some other data uh, regarding Ethereum there. What can you show us? Yeah, so this is, um, this is actually pretty interesting. So, you know, I, I think it's, it's, you know, we're still trying to figure out what to make of this data, but this shows the percentage of tweets coming from unique Twitter accounts on Ethereum and Bitcoin. So before, you, you know, we saw that 63% of Ethereum tweets were coming from unique Twitter accounts. That number has, uh, has now for the first time ever dropped below Bitcoin. So Bitcoin at the same time in December 2017, about 43%, so it's a 20% difference um, of, of tweets were coming from unique accounts. So what we're seeing is that more and more unique people on Twitter are talking about Bitcoin. So the community is kind of widening in terms of the number of people tweeting. Uh, whereas for Ethereum, it's it, it shrunk pretty significantly. Okay. And, and if, yep, go on. No, please, please, Ashley. No, no, no I, uh, I was just going to ask uh, about the last of your uh, data on this. Yeah, so just back, back, you know, we, we, we looked at Bitcoin, uh, Ethereum market cap and tweet volume dominance earlier. And we saw that Ethereum market, Ethereum's market cap dominance, with so percentage of the overall crypto market and its percentage of overall crypto tweets have both fallen. On the other hand, Bitcoin is, has risen in both regards. Bitcoin's market cap dominance was below 50% in December in, uh, in December of last year. Uh, it's now, you know, gone up. And this is something that the crypto community has talked about quite a lot to to around 70%. And we've also seen about a 20% increase 
in the total percentage of crypto tweet volume that that Bitcoin has represented uh, year over year. Okay, and, but now I understand that this phenomena of the uh, sort of falling tweet volumes is not simply limited uh, to Ethereum. Also, many of the other alts are suffering the same, if not worse, fates in this current uh, rather tepid market, we can call it. Yeah, for the most part, they are. We've seen a few examples of coins that have, have had their tweet volumes rise this year. One good example of that is Chainlink, which was seeing below before May was seeing below 400 tweets a day. And I think Chainlink, Chain, Chainlink tweets peaked about 1600. So they went 4x this year. They're back down to around eight or 900, but still up, you know, over 100% year over year. But for the most part, uh, alts are really, uh, alts are really struggling. And that's kind of evidenced by this tweet volume and market cap dominance uh, of, of, of all coins. So we looked at the top five largest cryptocurrencies here, uh, other than Bitcoin. So XRP, Ethereum, Litecoin, Bitcoin Cash, and Binance Coin. And for the most part, we're seeing that these coins are losing uh, a share of market cap and they're losing a share of tweet volume dominance. And the worst example of that is XRP, which has lost uh, more than 50% of its market cap dominance. So it's, it's market cap dominance, which once exceeded well over 10% is now uh, well below 5%. So it's, it's, it's representing a, 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 a shrinkingly small amount of, of overall uh, crypto, uh, of overall crypto market cap, as well as crypto conversations. And, and another coin that a lot of people have been talking about this year is Binance coin. So we can see that Binance coin has seen a, you know, saw a massive spike in the, uh, you know, it, it's, it's representation of total crypto Twitter as well as, uh, as its representation of total crypto market cap. But we're seeing that that number is, has gone down um, pretty significantly since about April. So, uh, sorry, uh, so sorry, Binance Coin at one point represented about two and a half percent of total crypto Twitter. It is now below 0.5 percent. So it's, it's seen quite a significant dip and, and market cap dominance is also down about 33 percent. Do you, I mean, interesting to note about Binance Coin in particular, because of the influence and the sort of uh, strength it has in the Asian markets, do you think that there's anything to be said for that when you're regarding sort of Twitter analysis there? Obviously, Asia, less usage of Twitter there. Do you think that would have an impact? And do you have any data on the comparative uh, Asian-focused uh, social media sites? Yeah, so we actually, for the first time ever, have built a, a new data feed, which is not officially announced. So I guess this is the first place that it's quasi officially announced. We built a uh, basically a significant development corporate action data feed. And what that means is in, in equity markets, uh, when you're looking, you know, a lot of times you're looking at things like stock splits or you're looking at at earnings or you're looking at um, stock buybacks. And so we've built the first feed in crypto, which tries to kind of emulate those events. So for example, a stock buyback, we kind of equate to a token burn and a stock split is kind of like a, a hard fork. So we've built a new tool to parse through over 2000 English and Chinese news sources to start tracking those different events. So we don't have the data yet. We're still running preliminary tests on it, but we, we, we should soon be able to kind of tell you know what's going on and i think that's a that's a really fair point uh, as it relates to binance coin particularly because finance has shut off a lot of its services to american customers as they get ready to release their american exchange so i think i think that's definitely a, a fair and valid point but i think you know more broadly seeing its its market cap dominance or sorry its tweet volume dominance decrease by 80 percent is, is still somewhat significant Right, certainly, certainly it's uh, a metric that we can use, we can look at and see that is very important. But let's focus in on one alt in particular, an alt which started 2019 with a lot of gusto, but now seems to be facing headwinds. Of course, I'm talking about uh, Craig Wright and his BSV. What can you tell us about the data you have on that? Yeah, so I'm always hesitant about any BSV data, to be honest. But um, what we saw in, in April was an absolutely massive spike in, in Twitter conversations on BSV um, for whatever reason. And, and we saw that Bitcoin SV represented over 5% of total crypto Twitter tweets at one point. Uh, that's since fallen to below 0.5%. It, it's fallen more than 95% in like, you know, four or five or six months, whatever it is. Um, and we've also seen that that BSV's market cap dominance has also fallen quite significantly. Uh, it's fallen by by over uh, 70 or 80 percent within the last uh, since since June June until August. And what we saw yesterday, which was really interesting, was after the you know the whole Craig Wright lawsuit, the, the you know the the climate suit, uh, we saw that that 
two of the three top words on crypto Twitter as it relates to Bitcoin were Craig and Wright. There were 2,198 Bitcoin tweets mentioning Craig Wright yesterday, and over 70% of them are ne were negative. So people do not have the uh, most fond outlook on the, this, this uh, person. Yeah, it certainly seems like Craig Wright has not gotten himself back into the good books by uh, seemingly owing $5 billion uh, to his former partners there. So interesting to see how that one plays out. But interesting that this project, which so long was considered a, a bit of a graveyard, as it were, and your, and your own data has shown that to us before, Josh, uh, regarding the fact that BSV really doesn't have that many users. And as you say, the, the data that seems to come from it, very unreliable. I mean, did you see that trend continuing? Yeah, I don't know. It's, it's, it's hard to tell, right? You know, there, you know, there have been lots of talks about, you know, Craig and, and Calvin and, you know, all the BSV guys trying to manipulate price and, and, and different things in terms of Twitter conversations. I mean, Craig has since left Twitter, which may be some, you know, maybe, maybe some part of this, he probably couldn't handle all the heat he was getting. Um, but, but yeah, I mean, we're not seeing very many real Bitcoin SV conversations on Twitter at this point. And, and they're just, that number is just decreasing and it's going down and doesn't, doesn't look like a great time, uh, for BSV into the future. We'll have to see how that one pans out. Fortunately, we'll have the tie and their proprietary sentiment data there to show us if any big dramatic changes occur. And I want to thank you, Joshua Frank, for breaking down this interesting information that we have for this week. I look forward to talking to you again soon. But in the meantime, stay with us at blocktv.com for all the latest in news, information, and the best analysis. I'm Asher Westrop Evans. Thanks for watching. For more news and updates, follow us on Twitter.